In assays using soluble dyed polysaccharides, non-hydrolyzed dyed polysaccharide is precipitated from solution using an organic solvent. As the polysaccharide is hydrolyzed by the enzyme, the smaller dyed fragments stay in solution on addition of the organic solvent. Following centrifugation of the reaction solution, the color of the supernatant solution is measured and this relates directly to the level of enzyme activity. The substrate employed is partially depolymerized and dyed CM cellulose 4M. The polysaccharide is dyed with Remrazol Brilliant Blue R to an extent of approximately one dye molecule per 20 sugar residues. Megazyme supplies this substrate in both a powder form and in a liquid ready to use form. Add 2 grams of powdered Azo CM cellulose to 80 ml of boiling and vigorously stirring water on a hot plate magnetic stirrer. Once it starts stirring vigorously, turn off the heat and allow the suspension to stir for approximately 20 minutes until the azocm cellulose is completely dissolved. Remove the beaker of substrate from the stirrer and add 5 ml of 2 molar sodium acetate buffer pH 4.5. If necessary, adjust the pH to 4.5 using a pH meter, but this shouldn't be necessary. Then adjust the volume to 100 mL by transferring the substrate to a 100 mL measuring cylinder. Rinsing out the beaker to get the remainder of the substrate. and then adjusting the volume to 100 mL with deionized water. The substrate is then transferred into a 100 mL Durand bottle. And for longer term stability, two drops of toluene can be added to this to prevent microbial contamination. Dissolve 40 grams of sodium acetate trihydrate and 4 grams of zinc acetate dihydrate in 150 ml of demineralized water. Stir the solution until these completely dissolve. Adjust the pH to 5 with 5 molar HCl. and then adjust the volume to 200 ml with demineralized water. Add this 200 ml of sodium acetate zinc acetate solution to 800 ml of industrial methylated spirits or ethanol and mix well. Pour this solution into a one litre Duran bottle and store it at room temperature.
prepare the 100 millimolar sodium acetate buffer pH 4.6 as described in the manual. Add 0.5 mL of substrate solution to each of four tubes, two for the sample and two for the blank. The solution is viscous, so use a positive displacement dispenser, remove excess liquid from the tip of the dispenser, and then transfer the solution to the tubes, preferably to the bottom of the tubes. Then place these four tubes plus the enzyme solution in a water bath of 40 degrees centigrade to allow them to pre-incubate for approximately five minutes. Initiate the incubation by adding 0.5 mL of suitably diluted pre-equilibrated enzyme solution to the substrate solution. Mixing the contents thoroughly on a vortex mixture, mixer and pressing the stopwatch immediately. Do the duplicate incubation after 10 seconds in exactly the same way. Allow these to incubate for 10 minutes before terminating the reaction. After exactly 10 minutes, Terminate the reaction by adding 2.5 ml of precipitant solution to the reaction solution while stirring vigorously on a vortex mixer. Vigorous stirring at this stage is absolutely essential to ensure that the precipitation reaction occurs completely. Prepare the reaction blank by adding 2.5 ml of precipitant to the substrate solution and then adding 0.5 ml of the enzyme solution while stirring the test tube vigorously in a test tube stirrer. This means the enzyme is inactivated before it has a chance to act on the substrate. It's very important to stir the tubes very vigorously as shown in this scene. Allow the reaction tubes to equilibrate to room temperature for 10 minutes. Stir the contents again and then place the tubes in a centrifuge and centrifuge the tubes at 1000 G for 10 minutes. Remove the tubes from the centrifuge. The supernatant in the reaction blanks is essentially colourless. The amount of colour in the supernatant of the enzyme reaction tubes is indicative of the amount of cellulase activity. The reaction blanks are used to zero the spectrophotometer at 590 nanometers, and then the colour or the solution in the reaction tubes is read against the blank and this will give an indication of cellulase activity. The units of cellulase activity per mil or gram of the original preparation is determined as shown below. The milliunits per assay is determined either from the regression equation or the standard curve using the absorbance value obtained in the assay. Then this is multiplied by 2 to allow for the conversion of 0.5 mL as used in the assay back to 1 mL, by 50 which is an extraction volume of 50 mL per 1 gram of sample or per 1 mL of the en original enzyme preparation, 1 in 1000 is the conversion from milliunits to units and dilution is the further dilution of the original extract.